Allow this heart to beat again. Quench their thirst. Lead the wandering soul back. Reverse death. And awaken them. You look for Samuel, the Guildmaster. He should be somewhere in town. When you tell him that you can't find Samuel, he tells you to check the temple. Samuel prays for his friends on occasion. Did you find him? before the goddess statues, Jula, Althena, and Vernus. These statues have all crumbled. Texts say the goddesses sacrificed themselves to defeat a dragon, which caused their likenesses to degrade as well. Althena, the one in the center, is the goddess of compassion, battle, and odyssey, making her popular with adventurers. If your party falls during your adventure, a prayer to Althena and a tithing of your money will resurrect the party. If you are repeatedly depending on her grace, the amount you must offer for her services will continually increase. A giant man in armor finishes his prayers and turns around. His pensive expression quickly turns fierce as he sees you. He tells you he was praying because he has sent many friends to look for the king, but they haven't found the slightest clue. When you ask to help, Samuel just nods and hands you a request form. It's the same request the temple gave you. In a remote region, marriageable girls are disappearing one by one. The catacombs are believed to be linked somehow. As you leave the temple, a ragged old man slumped in the road calls out to you in a gravelly voice. His raspy voice makes it difficult for you to discern if he's even speaking your language. You can give him a coin if you feel pity for him. Of course, you're free to walk away as well. He doesn't even acknowledge the coin. Imagine a nice scene. He mutters over and over. You probably won't be able to communicate with him, no matter how long you strain your concentration. To solve the mystery of the disappearances, you head to the catacombs where the villagers fear to tread.
In the catacombs, huh? stark white bones are strewn about the ground as far as the eye can see. <laughs> the sheer number of the deceased is the only indication left of this area's former prosperity. What? Knight stumbles out of the darkness towards you. You surmise that he is not of this world. The knight is muttering to himself as if in a daze. If I end my own life, they can no longer sacrifice me. When you move closer, the knight extends his hand. He's holding a scroll. When you accept it, the knight disappears. The path ahead of you is connected to the ruins of the castle colloquially called the Castle of the Dead. In olden times, whenever a girl disappeared, the locals would say she'd been called to the Castle of the Dead. Done. 
It's my turn. Simple. Can somebody help me? You saved a village girl. You must protect her Thank now. You. Oh, I can do that. A village girl. You must protect her now. My turn. Simple. <gasps> A village girl, you must Thank protect you. her now. village girl. If she is bitten by the others, she will become a vampire as well. Yeah. <laughs> 
kidnapped girls had been turned. They are now vampires, attacking other people. You utter a silent prayer, hoping that you have slain the last vampire, and leave the ruins. In your hands is the bloody scroll that the Ghost Knight had given you. You have unraveled the mystery of the village girl's disappearances. Obtain your reward at the guild. You are curious about the bloody scroll. You show Samuel the scroll and tell him what you saw in the catacombs. After examining the scroll, the signature and other details indicate that it is a letter from the king to the princess. It is a report telling her that he had obtained the dragon's crown. You wonder if this letter is true. You can't deny that the ghost was clad in mail that was eerily similar to the king's armor. So perhaps this is true. The king's death will profoundly affect the kingdom and neighboring lands. Samuel orders you to report it to the castle. 